Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I don't see the, there's no Mega Millions winners here, right? Yeah, so. Actually, I think if you won Mega Millions, you probably wouldn't be here. I don't think I would either, so. Um, and uh, if you are here, you could probably open up the bar later on for us. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, um, I pack 2023. Uh, like, as most HiPAC users know is that we, we do a release uh, at least once a year. I mean, usually we have a major release uh, the beginning of the year, and it fluctuates. Uh, we've, been, we've been pretty good as, as far as getting it out around January, early January. <clears throat> and, um, uh, it, you know, we've had it, uh, times where it's been delayed into February, March, maybe even April. Um, and uh, we're expecting to have the HiPAC 2023 done by the end of the month. We ran into, into a few snags. We wanted to get a few of the uh, updates kind of um, really uh, uh, kind of tweaked and everything, make, him, make it all, uh, a lot of stuff, uh, improve a lot of stuff and everything. So we're running a little bit late. And of course, you hit the end of um, 2022 and, you know, the holidays are there. So you start losing a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of people and, and a lot of focus, not to mention we're all working on the uh, conference presentations and things too. So everything sort of becomes, uh, comes to a little bit of a standstill. So now that we're getting back into it, we, we should have the 2023 uh, released by the end of the month. And as most of you know that um, a lot of you guys are, or most of you guys I would say are probably on, using the, on the maintenance plan. So, you know, when you're up on the maintenance plan, you get in addition to free support, you get all the updates available. So uh, um, the last release of course was HiPAC 2022 and we've been doing quarterly updates. Uh, we do a Q1, which comes out, you know, beginning of April, the Q2 around July, Q3, October, and then uh, there is no Q4 because uh, that's usually the, uh, you know, December, January is the official release. Um, you can go to the HiPAC.com uh, website, go to the customer su support uh, drop down and uh, click on programs and updates, and you can download various versions of HiPAC, whether you want to... Uh, um, 64 bit, if you want 32 bit, God help you, because uh, you, know, you don't see too many 32 bit computers around anymore, but some people still insist on having the, the 32 bit uh, install. And then all the, the quarterly uh, release uh, versions are, are posted up there. So you'll probably get a notice on uh, the official release very soon. And, um, and also, um, in addition to that, we usually coincide our Sounding Better newsletter uh, for each quarter release. So you get a lot more in-depth information regarding uh, the updates that we're, uh, re uh, we're releasing at that time. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna just run through a lot of the, uh, the features here. We've got, let me see, let me just go back here a second. Oh yeah, um, 2023 cons comprises of also um, all the 2022 um, quarter release updates in addition to new uh, features, a lot of bug fixes, enhancements, and, and so on that are going to be in 2023. Okay, so I'm going to run through a few of the things in the shell and uh, just kind of touch up on a lot of these. And you'll see uh, uh, as you get into all the breakout se sessions, they'll describe a little bit of this stuff uh, more in depth. Um, one thing that we've added is support for bag files, bathymetric attributed grid files. Um, uh, these are basically a, um, a binary type um, a data, a gridded data set. You can download a lot, of, you can export them from uh, uh, various programs in HiPAC. You know, uh, somebody said, well, you can export them, but why can't you import them? So we added that feature. Uh, what's cool is that you could go to the uh, NOAA website and download a lot of these bag files for, for various um, uh, areas and stuff and then load them into HiPAC. They draw as a background file. Uh, in HiPAC, again, it's almost like a, like a HiPAC matrix, if you're familiar with that, but uh, of course binary. Um, what's nice too is that it'll use the actual HiPAC colors uh, and, and color code the depths based on that. And then you could use, their, uh, if you're familiar with HiPAC, there's a little query tool that you could use on, on, on certain uh, images. There's a little button over here on the right um, that you could click anywhere on that, um, in, within that bag file, and it'll uh, the info query window will pop up and give you the the cell depth for wherever you click in there. So uh, that's something that was added for 2023. The other thing we've just added too is the uh, uh, sun illuminated matrix. 
Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, a big request, you know, we've had the sun illuminated matrix in the survey program for a long time, and uh, we never actually added it to uh, the high pack shell. We had a little bit of a, um, a display, uh, a change of display a couple years ago, but we really gave it an option uh, to enhance that sun illumination by um, going to the, the map window in high pack. If you hit the drop down menu, there's a, uh, the widgets drop down menu. Uh, the high pack shell, you could have multiple maps. So every map has a widgets drop down menu where you can you know, draw your grids, uh, north arrow, color, color bars, and things like that. Uh, at the bottom is a button called lighting. When you click on that, it opens up this little uh, dialogue right here where you can kind of click around and adjust uh, the, the lighting um, and the 3D illumination, you know, sun illumination to your liking. Another thing is <clears throat> we, we've added the option to um, draw the position of your sound velocity files. Over the past few years, uh, we've worked with um, um, the, the Castaway, the AML um, uh, sound velocity profilers, the, the Veil ports. Uh, they all have the ability to store um, uh, position information on the location of that cast. Well, we just took advantage of that and we were able to draw the, those positions as, if you can see the blue dots on the screen here, uh, those are the sound velocity um, locations. What's, what's cool about that too is that as you hover the, the mouse over, it draws a little um, uh, circle around. When you, when, um, when you click on it, it'll bring up this dialog giving all the uh, velocity information. And you can also, it has all, also has a, an open button here where you can open it right up into our sound velocity program. Uh, so kind of nice uh, little uh, eye candy type thing. <clears throat> this has been a request for quite a while. Um, we've had the option to export um, uh, contours to Google Earth. And um, we've had a request to be able to uh, do contour labels. It's been an ongoing thing. The problem is that um, Google Earth doesn't support um, uh, contour labels. So um, the way we got around it was just uh, creating text items for each of these, um, uh, each, each contour label. Uh, it basically draws like a, like a sounding would if you exported soundings or any other text item. And it, it tries to fit it within the, um, uh, within the little gap that's uh, available uh, where, where the uh, sounding label is in the, uh, the contour DXF file. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, so when, when you export your, your contour from tin model with the labels, this is pretty much how it's, it's going to display on the screen. It's not going to be a perfect fit in between those contours. As you can see, they're a little bit shifted. It's just the way we've written um, the labels in DXF files for uh, quite a long time. They're, I think they're lower left hand justified as far as text goes. Uh, it, it, down the road, we might change it to where it's actually center uh, justified, but you know, that time will come. Uh, another thing we've added uh, was the display of the Esri uh, TIFF files. These are pretty cool because every um, pixel in a TIFF file has like a, has a depth value associated with it. So if you bring up your TIFF file um, as a background file in HiPack, um, you can use again the HiPack depth colors and, the, and uh, um, adjust uh, your depth colors accordingly to um, to your liking on the screen on the on the screen. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, high pack shell, another re request, uh, be able to actually uh, reposition targets. Somebody ha had the idea of uh, why can't you just kind of drag them to uh, the position that you want, you know. Uh, but previously, you'd have to go into the target editor and just kind of go manually type in a value, get it to your, your location. So now you can actually um, click on the little add target button, which is on the right hand side. Um, that's the, the button that's been there for a few years now. You can actually click anywhere on the screen; it'll make a target. But if you take, if you click on that button and then hover the cursor over your target, you just click and drag to the new location, and it'll be saved that way. So um, that's a, a a new feature too. Uh, target orientation. Well, we changed the target ed editor about ooh six eight years ago um, to a, a newer version a lot of people we got a lot of grief uh, from a lot of customers they just didn't like the way it worked and we put a bunch of options in there we took them out of the main shell high pack shell settings which is what the the window is that we're seeing here um, and we removed the orientation so we put that back into the uh, uh, setting so this is like a global orientation option where it, it places the label um, 
you know, above, to the right, center, uh, left, and so on of the, of the target, uh, rather than have to go in. And it's, it's a global setting that you could overwrite in each individual target if need be. Another option that was a request is to be able to um, sort log files. Uh, everybody that's used HyPack knows that when we um, create a, uh, uh, when we, you know, you collect HyPack data, it creates a daily a log file. And a log file is just a list of data files that were created uh, over the course of the day. And we have these tools in the main HyPack, uh, what we call the shell, um, that you can pick and choose uh, you know, any of your raw or edited files and create your own log file. Um, a lot of times, you know, just the, the names are a little bit uh, on the vague side or whatever, so now you can actually sort by the name or sort by the time. So if you want you know, the most recent uh, files over the course of the day, sort by the time, and then uh, just pick and choose, drag them over uh, and, and create your new log file. Bucket files for all you guys using you know, ex excavators and bucket dredges. Um, we've, we've had this uh, bucket file option for quite a number of years now. Um, but we've also added the option to add uh, display labels in, the, in here. So you can display the buckets, either you know, just a standard uh, bucket, which is basically you draw a square on the screen, user-defined square. Uh, you can have the depth elevation associated with it. The text item, some of the uh, device drivers, uh, you can type in you know, the bottom type, for example, or have the date and time uh, uh, drawn um, w within each bucket, uh, bucket mark. Um, the transparency color tool. Um, this one is, um, you know, we've had uh, different transparency options. You know, um, typically in HiPack, the, the white background is uh, considered the transparent color. So uh, everything kind of, uh, you know, bleeds through that. That's, that was the whole idea of it. But, um, you know, occasionally you would have a chart where it's a slightly off-white, maybe a cream color, and it's not transparent, uh, and it's a real pain to try to f figure out what that transparency color is. So now there's a cursor mode where you can take the cursor and click on a, um, a point anywhere, uh, you know, within the color that you want to make transparent, and it's going to choose that color. And as we see here, we have this kind of landmass area in the uh, tan color. Uh, you, you click on an area in there, it's going to choose that color as your transparent color, and it's going to display uh, transparent uh, on the main screen. Uh, matrix editor. Um, again, a lot of these are requests. Uh, we, we get a lot of these requests from you guys, actually, a lot of times at the conferences and uh, over the year with, uh, you know, talking with support and, and so on. Um, that's what's, what's great about these conferences, that everybody kind of uh, gets in here and throws their ideas and gives us some, some great ideas what to throw in the uh, package next year. And this has been an ongoing thing, is that uh, for people that um, want to, like they have a matrix file, a filled matrix, for example, over here, like a, whether it's high, a multi beam or a dredge type matrix, um, what would happen normally when you would resize that matrix, it would just basically, basically just wipe everything out of that matrix and, and save the uh, rectangle matrix area. So now it, it will actually, um, when you resize it, it actually retains the data. So you can resize it and even change the cell size. And uh, it's basically like a tin model type algorithm that goes in here and, um, and fills your, uh, your matrix uh, with the, uh, the cell depths here at whatever uh, resizing that you've done. Okay. Another request, this was for somebody with some, doing some AUV work where um, they wanted to be able to connect uh, the, the lines in like a Z pattern. So ba basically what this is, it works with um, when you create parallel lines in our line editor. Uh, there's a little checkbox here, connect lines for aut autonomous vehicles. It's kind of grayed out here for some reason. Um, and basically it just takes the endpoint uh, creates a line. It, 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 it ends up be, uh, fr becoming uh, from one to what do we have? Like six or eight um, uh, single uh, segment lines to one continuous um, uh, line in a Z pattern for the uh, autonomous vehicle to follow. So that was a, a request uh, from somebody. We were doing this stuff for some of the uh, export the um, uh, formats for AUVs, but we've actually added the, to the uh, the line editor now. <clears throat> Uh, border editor is is nice too. Uh, if you're familiar with the border editor, where you can create a border and clip data or plan lines or what what have you, limit uh, volumes. 
Um, now, as you, as you click on a point, uh, as, as you move the cursor around the screen, it gives you the, uh, uh, basically the distance and bearing from the last point that you clicked on uh, right on the screen. So when you're, when you're dragging, or, or if you're dragging the node, uh, it'll, it'll display that, um, that, that position and everything. It just makes it a lot easier to, uh, um, a lot helpful when, when you're trying to create a border. Target editor, like, like I said, uh, target editor has been kind of one of these programs that um, you know we, we did some changes a few years ago. A lot of people didn't like it. And we've been trying to we had scrambled over the years to make it a bit more usable, and um, <clears throat> we, we've got a lot more functionality, uh, especially for the import and export options. Um, be able to import targets or old style target files, export the same. Uh, a lot of this has been built into the target editor. It's funny because we have uh, the target editor and then there's also some targeting tools if you click on the target file folder in the main high pack shell. Um, and they, they were always kind of out of sync in terms of doing different things. So we added all the functionality that was in the, in the right click option into the target editor, exporting to uh, uh, targets with spreadsheet, um, export to the uh, old TGT format, uh, T84 is basically like our target format, but with uh, lat long coordinates, you know, older style high pack formats, RTF and export to uh, just a, a text file where you can select the attributes that you wanna export into that file. Um, here's an example of one of the RTF uh, target reports. Uh, the text dialog for exporting the different text items within your targets, and then an import uh, dialog. So if you have a um, a big list of coordinates and and names that you want to convert to a tar target file, you click uh, the uh, you can go to the import tab, and you get a little dialog like this where you can pick and choose the columns, uh, the delimiters, and so on, and uh, be able to import that um, right into uh, as a target in HiPack. <clears throat> We've done a few changes in the uh, Geodesy program. Um, th this was uh, really a, a, a request by our, our support group, and um, we've actually um, done th did this uh, option in the high in high sweep last year, where uh, in the high sweep the HSX files that are collected on the right hand side, you see where the big uh, uh, rectangle is. Um, that's all the Geodesy information from your project. So now that gets stored in the header of, um, in addition to the HSX files, now the raw files. And what's cool about that is that, um, you know, uh, you can basically, uh, it's a good QC tool that if you, um, you got your surveyors out collecting data, something doesn't seem right, you could go into the Geodesy program, go to Tools, Import HSX Raw Data. If you click on that and choose your data file, it's gonna take all the Geodesy settings from your raw or HSX files and populate it in Geodesy. So you might realize, oh, they were using the wrong geoid model or wrong KTD file, and um, you can uh, pretty much troubleshoot accordingly by that option. So. Um, I think I'd be, I'll, I'll mention about that uh, in, in the survey program. So in 2023, it's a nice, nice feature to be able to, and it, it works great for um, support. Somebody sends a, a raw file, they're having a question about it. Um, support can kind of recreate your project uh, with the same geodesy and just verify that everything looks okay. Uh, custom grid changes. We added this feature uh, a few years ago, and it was a little bit on the clunky side. It works okay, but it didn't, um, um, save all the settings. Basically what the idea is is that you can set up uh, um, all your geodesy settings. You might have a KTD file or a VDATUM uh, file or, or something, maybe a local grid and, and whatnot. So now um, you can go to, uh, before you would save a custom grid and it would list um, in, the, uh, in the drop down for predefined. So now what it, it'll do is that if you create a custom grid, um, I like to do this a lot with uh, RTK stuff. So I have multiple, uh, if I want to do RTK with uh, uh, KTD files, VDATUM, and, and do comparisons, I could save these different custom grids. So I go into Geodesy, um, load the custom grid that I saved here, uh, uh, and it'll display it in the title area up here, the custom grid that's loaded. Um, so you can um, run through di different variations of, uh, of geodesy with your data in case you wanna recalculate RTK or recalculate positions. It's a good way to be able to um, compare uh, e a lot easier. Another a new tool that we've added now is to uh, a little tool to import uh, geoid models. We had a little 
command line tool that I've been using for quite a number of years. Uh, a former programmer uh, wrote it when, when creating uh, geoid files, the hypac.geo files. Um, you could take uh, a lot of the supported um, formats uh, available, MNT, the bin files, which are your, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, you know, Noah or uh, G uh, Geodesy, uh, the, the standard uh, bin files like the Con US, uh, all that, the GOI 2018 and everything. Uh, BYN, GGF, uh, GEO, I believe is uh, the Hydro Magic GEO. It's uh, very different from our format, but we could convert those to a, a high pack format. And there's a lot of sources, uh, you know, government agencies that um, abide by some of these formats. So it's relatively easy to use this tool now to convert uh, a geoid file that you have, or if you have something, say, uh, what's the Trimble one, the G GGF, you can convert that in this uh, tool also to, to a, a high pack uh, geoid model. Um, it's gonna be under the utilities geodesy in 2023. Uh, it's pretty neat too, because you could take the um, geoid model, export it to an ASCII text file, so you could actually visually you know, look at the um, lat long and the uh, uh, separation value in the, uh, in the geoid model uh, and, and compare it with um, you know, published, uh, I, um, published values that you might be able to find. And also we've added a bunch of uh, new geoid models. We added a couple for uh, France over the course of the year, one from Poland, uh, Lithuania, and Latvia. I think there might have been one or two others. So, you know, if you're doing any surveying in Poland, Lithuania, you know, you're good to go. Hardware has got a lot of enhancements over the, uh, we, we've, we're at, we've actually been working on it, I think up to even Friday, uh, this past Friday. Um, been uh, uh, passing it back and forth to Andrew, one of our programmers, kind of, he's probably pulling his hair out because I've come up with uh, all these weird ideas and stuff or, you know, uh, uh, scenarios of why, you know, what could change here and everything. But the idea was, um, the, again, this is the, the hardware program that we had for seven or eight years. There were some uh, inconsistencies in it, in the way you cho chose information and, and some of the tabs. For each device, we try to put all the information on one tab now. So um, when, you, uh, add a when you add a device, you select the boat, uh, the mobile, and it's gonna list all your devices specific to that, you know, that mobile. Uh, so you could go in, choose your devices, and then when you click on each individual device, it has all the information, the functions, the options, all the connection stuff on one tab, uh, recording uh, rate and everything, and then there's a setup button. So we've done a lot of things here uh, just to make it a lot easier, a little more uh, hopefully sensible uh, to add your, your devices. Uh, it's, it's come out pretty nice, short of having a, a wizard, which is, is in the works too. Uh, you can right-click and delete items. You can right-click and move to another mobile if you're if you're like using a towfish or something. You can. Uh, it's, it's a lot more flexible uh, in the way it's working. So I think you'll uh, enjoy that when they have that have that released uh, in end of the month. Bunch of different device drivers that were um, worked on over the course of the the year. Quite a few uh, uh, dredge drivers here. Um, I'm not gonna go through each one here. Uh, auto bucket mark, mechanical excavator, uh, DLL, uh, all dredge pack stuff. Our generic drivers for parsing, you know, ASCII data had a, a few uh, features added. Uh, another uh, inclinometer driver, the NEMA DLL. Uh, we've added the uh, NEMA X, XDR string, which is a, uh, actually there's multiple types of XDR strings, but it's specific to the XDR depth string. Uh, there's a few, uh, sounders out there, I believe, that output this XDR message, and it was, uh, so we added that to the NEMA DLL. Um, NEMA output, there was a request to add uh, a ZDA string, a time uh, to be able to send that out to another device, so that was added. Um, the C tool stuff, uh, pretty robust um, uh, sensors, I think they come from over in um, Holland, I believe, uh, big stainless steel, they weigh, you know, more than, by a senior in high school, but uh, they're pretty pretty uh, robust uh, type uh, systems. They're you know pretty much practically indestructible. So we've been working with those. Um, yeah, a few other. Um, we've done some stuff with the uh, Telestra equipment with their uh, MCAS devices and, and, and everything. So we have uh, device uh, drivers and uh, interfaces that work with their stuff too. Um, the tide track. Uh, 
device driver, added a timeout option in there. Uh, there's a high sweep extended DLL, which ta uh, passes uh, position information from your multi beam system. Some of the systems, uh, all that stuff comes into uh, the multi beam and then it gets spit out of, uh, you know, um, uh, a network port, and we can read that stuff and just pass that to a high pack survey. And then uh, the POSIM V driver was just updated too to read the, uh, uh, they're working now with the Trimble GSOF messages, so um, that's also available with the uh, POSIM V, the latest POSIM V driver. Okay, survey, high pack survey. Uh, another option, uh, again, we're doing more with the Esri GeoTIFFs, uh, being able to export that matrix file, the, 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 the filled matrix to an Esri uh, GeoTIFF, and again, uh, you could draw that as a background file in HiPack, and it, you're not stuck with the colors that were exported because the, uh, they have um, uh, basically a death value for each pixel, and you could use the uh, HiPack color palette to, to color it accordingly. Uh, and then I mentioned about the uh, Geodesy being written in the raw file. Again, uh, we, we saw it imported into, into uh, Geodesy. Um, support, uh, you know, we came out with RAD survey last year, I think, well, code name RAD survey. It was an updated survey uh, version. Um, and uh, what, that had been worked on for a couple years prior. And uh, just before that, in the old survey program, we had support for up to six windows. Well, that never got into RAD survey until somebody complained about it. And we popped that in uh, the, the most recent version of RAD survey. Um, not that it's RAD, but it's just the, uh, the, um, uh, the software they use for developing. But, um, and then also the navigation parameters. Uh, this is a really nice, to me, one of my favorite features, actually having an apply button put in there because, uh, you know, for example, you're going in here and you want to uh, adjust uh, the start line gate, you know, um, you gotta go to options, navigation parameters, type in the value, click okay, and see what happens on the screen. No, I don't like that. Options, navigation parameters, go, type in the value, okay. So now you just hit apply and kind of watch and, and see how it looks before you actually close the dialog. So that's kind of a uh, well, welcome feature, I think. Uh, last year, we had this device health window that you could uh, uh, access under the options shared memory in the survey program. And uh, it just gives you uh, some, some health readings on uh, mostly timing issues that can possibly prop up in, um, especially with multi-beam stuff. And uh, you'll get a little red warning light up there um, on the screen. You know, right now it says good. I think, I, I believe you can adjust uh, the, um, uh, the timing in here too, that if it goes uh, beyond a certain value, uh, um, it'll, it'll um, show up in red, giving you a warning that you have some sort of a timing issue. But we also added uh, ping rate, whoops, ping rate and uh, boat speed to the um, uh, data display here too. Um, so just kind of uh, a little bit more of a QC tool here. So uh, it's basically calculating, the, getting the boat speed from the, uh, uh, surveys shared memory and ping rate calculates based on uh, the timing, the time tags that are coming in uh, to the program. And also a little checkbox in here to choose between uh, if you want to display the high pack or the high sweep uh, depth device um, uh, in the uh, device health window. More about the bucket shapes. In addition to the standard bucket shapes, we were able to add these um, um, uh, shape options here where it's the, uh, you could create these uh, shapes in, in the boat shape editor where you, you, you know, you could create your vessel shapes and everything. So under the bucket parameters uh, in, in dredge pack, uh, there's a little checkbox here for uh, show guide bucket and it'll kind of display that your shape, uh, you know, like on, on a dredge location of your, uh, your boom or what have you. Down below here, you could uh, check the box here load up any of your boat shapes here. And then as you drop it along, um, uh, drop the buckets uh, in, uh, in dredge pack, it'll display them on the screen with whatever settings that you have in here. And now also um, the high pack shell will honor uh, these shapes uh, being drawn on the screen. Um, so that's something that was uh, added. We, were, uh, we had a project, I think, uh, dropping these, like uh, whatever you call them, tetrapods on the, um, um, uh, down for building a, like a, a break wall. They look like kind of jacks, but uh, I don't know if anybody these days know what jacks are, so. Uh, I just remember all that from Looney Tunes. Okay, TPU editor. 
We've added um, also there's a, a the WASP. It's, I think it's a relatively low cost uh, multi beam system, uh, and that was added to the list of multi beam sonars in here. So we're constantly updating the uh, TPU list. So if there's any uh, systems that aren't in here, usually uh, we uh, we add them um, based on request. If anybody's using the TPU uh, displays or if you do uh, for uh, for QC work. Um, survey remote view. Huh? Am I doing okay on time, I guess? Yeah, I got plenty of time. Um, we've had this program uh, uh, called Survey Viewer. It, it's uh, stored in the HiPack install folder. There's a Survey Viewer folder. And the idea is this little executable that you could take to another computer, uh, run it on a computer, and it'll display, uh, you know, you, you connect to the uh, your survey computer uh, through the uh, uh, Ethernet, and it'll display get, uh, map display, data display, and so on. Um, problem is that uh, Windows no longer supports that. So uh, um, we found out that the hard way when we were trying to uh, figure out how to fix it uh, back in the summertime. And we had an intern that um, uh, we, we put him on it, and he uh, 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 took the remote view over uh, desktop, I think it's called. Uh, um, it's an option in the survey program where you can bring up your uh, survey window in any web browser and really enhanced it. Um, did a really nice job with the, you know, um, uh, depending on what you're looking at. If you're looking on a desktop, it has a different view than the mobile uh, phone view if you're looking on a um, mobile phone or a iPad or something, tablet. So um, all this stuff is, was designed to replace the survey viewer, which is pretty much obsolete now. And uh, there's not much that we can do about it. So sorry if anybody was using that. But um, you know, some Windows, uh, a lot of times, they, they make changes. It's kind of out of our control. So uh, you know, that, that's um, what we have now. But the uh, desktop, the uh, remote view over the web uh, has been nicely enhanced. High sweep survey. Um, this was another request uh, to um, limit the size of HSX files. I think uh, uh, we had a few options where you could um, uh, limit it based on, on time. Um, it had come up, uh, I know other softwares do the same thing where you can limit based on size. Um, so uh, you can just go into the, um, uh, the file logging options and in the uh, logging options you have the file size limit. You just type in the uh, uh, value here in, in um, megabytes and uh, you know, because it's multi-beam data, um, if you're looking for something smaller than 10 me megabytes, you probably shouldn't be collecting multi-beam. So um, it gives you a little bit of warning if you're, uh, you know, um, if you're trying to put a value less than uh, uh, 10 megabytes, which won't work. Okay. Um, we've done a lot of work with Kongsberg over the past year. They've, uh, um, their systems uh, out, uh, output uh, this KM, KM all format. Um, uh, a lot of information there. We worked uh, pretty close uh, w with them uh, and got working with the, uh, the you know, the, the different systems, the M2040, 712, uh, EM304. Um, and uh, you can use the, uh, you know, it, it works with um, the, the K controller uh, and the, the variations of uh, Sys5 and everything to um, with high sweep uh, being either on a separate computer or on the same computer and so on. Um, we have the option also to, um, is that right, LMAL style files? That's not right, KMAL fi uh, style files and uh, option to reverse the uh, um, reverse mount um, for uh, some of the systems here. So we have all those options uh, available. It's, I think the driver is just called the uh, Kongsberg KMAL driver. So if you have the latest versions of SIS or the K controller, um, I believe probably the latest firmware, I would have to double check with, with Kongsberg on that. That's all available in 2023. Um, some of the other stuff in survey, we've added uh, a driver for the T51, Teledyne. Um, you, uh, you can do multiple instances of the uh, CBATs, uh, the T20, T50, and T51 now for like, you know, uh, dual head type systems. Uh, we live the uh, resign uh, absorption and spreading loss to the HSX file. Uh, support for the Norbit sonar with yaw stabilization. Um, setup option to enable start stop uh, uh, logging uh, with the, the Norbit uh, interface. Uh, we've added this uh, Hydrotech multi beam driver. Uh, I believe it's a Chinese company. Um, relatively low cost, and then um, a fix for the Picotech driver. We've uh, ha had reports of the Picotech uh, multi-beam system not working for 
since I think 2018 or so, but we could never quite uh, get in, in touch with uh, whoever was uh, complaining about it. And finally, uh, we were able to get that fixed this, this past year. So that's all up and running now um, in 2023. Okay. Real time, real time cloud has a, <clears throat> a bit of a cleaner look. We, um, I've always found the uh, options get, get a little confused when you're clicking on different buttons and all that. So we, we started combining um, uh, different uh, settings, boat settings and stuff to a single dialog. Um, a lot of the uh, icons have been duplicated in the drop down menus too, so it's a little bit easier to find your way around. We've added hot, the hotkeys, so if your focus is on um, the real time cloud program, you can hit Control S, Control E, and so on, and it'll pass that, um, um, those commands over to the survey program to start, stop logging, and increment and decrement the line. You know, previously, it had to have, be um, focused on high pack or high sweep, but not the real time cloud program, so that's a welcome feature. And uh, now we're able to display um, bucket files and 3D shapes too. So we're doing a lot more with the uh, uh, dredging side with real-time cloud. Ooh, side scan survey, another um, option, uh, another um, angle gain control, AGC was added. Um, uh, it's a TVG type option, uh, better signal visualization, better colors. Uh, um, I guess the uh, way I understand it, it handles the, the bright and uh, dark spots uh, better with less streaking. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Daniel will probably cover that in the side scan um, uh, thing a little bit, a bit more in depth. And also uh, we've added the uh, Klein Max View um, to uh, uh, our, our list of uh, sonars too. What's nice about this, it has a, um, a middle beam here, a, a middle uh, transducer, this uh, gap filler sonar. So you, uh, um, you, you can fill in that, that water col column gap with uh, information here. It also has a little, um, you can target in the, in the center channel everything too, which is nice. Uh, and has a, a, a QC display to kind of give you a re 2D representation showing the altitude pitch and the look ahead direction of that center channel. Uh, here, this back by popular demand, uh, single beam editor, the SB Max 64. Um, we had a feature in the old one called pre-sort. And uh, it was kind of an interesting tool, but it was kind of dangerous to use on raw data because um, uh, as you can see in a couple of these pictures, here's an example of a bunch of depth spikes. And in the old editor, if you use the uh, pre-sort tool um, uh, with your raw data, you had a risk of actually say, you know, pre-sort basically would sort your data along your line based on distance, time, number of samples. But um, if you're kind of doing, flying in there blindly and pre-sorting all, all your data, you risk saving one of those depth spikes like we see over here. So um, now uh, what we did in, um, in the SB Max 64 under the tools menu is a uh, pre-sort option. So you can run through the data, clear out all the, uh, you know, outliers and spikes and everything, uh, then go under there, click on pre-sort, and it has the same options as we had in this SB Max 32. Uh, so it's much better way of, um, of, uh, of pre-sorting. I remember, uh, you know, uh, nobody really liked the, the other way. That's why we were hesitant of putting it into uh, SB Max 64, and then we kind of thought, well, it would be a great uh, tool item to be able to uh, pre-sort your data before you, um, and, and thin it out. So uh, that's, that's what's available now in SB Max 64. <clears throat> Show interpolated depths is an option, a little icon that was added. When you interpolate depths, uh, uh, well, when we delete depths, they're flagged as deleted. So um, you, can, you can display your, um, uh, your depths. You can kind of go back and forth and look at the deleted versus the undeleted points. Um, when you interpolate a depth, it just, it, it just takes that original depth and just uh, wipes out and, and then interpolates a new depth based on the, uh, um, the depths before and after. Uh, so now we have an option in here where you can actually show and revert the interpolated depth, just make sure you haven't really messed up anything. So it's kind of a, a good way to, a uh, good QC tool to make sure you haven't uh, changed uh, <clears throat> too much of your, um, uh, your data. And it'll show a little, um, blue X when you do the revert, uh, showing the, the points that have um, been interpolated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remove duplicate positions. I know I have a water here somewhere. <clears throat> um, 
This is something that kind of that popped up. It was a weird instance where uh, somebody collected a bunch of, uh, I think it was single beam data. And um, as they loaded it into the uh, editor, the profile looked kind of funky like we see over here. It would have these little lines going like that. We couldn't figure out what was going on. And then realized that uh, for every depth value, um, uh, there were multiple positions in there. Is that, I think that's how, how it was. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, no, it might have been, um, I, th I think it was what, 10, uh, maybe the GPS was set at 10 hertz. And I guess when you're in um, like a standalone GPS mode, uh, I mean, in terms of a, um, <clears throat> like a base station mode, it, uh, it spits out the same position uh, 10 times a second. So when you're trying to interpolate depths and positions that you would get these weird little spikes in here. So we, we thought of a, about a, a way of um, having this option available in the um, read parameters, remove duplicate position records. So what it does, it, it scans through and looks for the exact same position um, that's occurring multiple times, and it'll give you a much better looking uh, profile. It's a good way to get rid of uh, all these, these crazy position spikes. So we were gonna kind of do it invisibly, but we figured we'd probably get somebody upset by uh, deleting points, so we, we gave the option, put the option in here so uh, they can use it or, or not use it. Uh, Teledyne Odom S7K support. We added this um, about, I think we worked on this with, uh, around the, the middle of the year. Um, with the Odom uh, E20, uh, their software has the ability to uh, log the S7K file, because it's kind of the um, Teledyne the standard format now, but it was also applied to single beam data. I think it has all the bin information in there too, position and everything too. So we can import these files directly into the single beam editor now. And um, you can uh, set your uh, geodesy in HiPack and it'll recalculate the, the RTK tides based on what's in those files. Uh, so that, that's kind of a nice option too. We've also had uh, added support for the seabed ID systems. Didn't really know um, um, these were still around, the, uh, the Roxanne and the Echo Plus systems, but I think apparently some people are still using them. We have the support in the old S uh, SB Max, the 32-bit version. Uh, uh, we never uh, ported it over to the newer version until you know somebody requests, hey, uh, we, we still do this stuff, so uh, can you add it? So we added it. You're welcome. <laughs> um, remove 1,000 point limit when loading LNW files in the tide adjustment program. Well, yeah, so you, the tide adjustments program is where you uh, have multiple tide stations. You load up an LNW file, like a, uh, um, a center line, a channel center line. Well, apparently, I guess they had over a thousand points in that center line, and it was was failing. So we got rid of the uh, the limit there. Export program under final products, uh, export the geo JSON uh, format. Um, and we could convert uh, the different various types, the all files, which are, are uh, uh, HS2X are our edited files. Um, I mean, I'm not sure why you even bother to have the SWP files. I, th I think those are about 20 years obsolete now, but it's in there if you happen to have the files. So, um, border files, XYZ, LNW, and Targus. And you have the option in here to output um, uh, the positions either in XY, local, or WGC84, or uh, lat, um, um, sorry, lat long, local, or WGC84, or XY. And SB selection is a, a tool. Uh, we came out with this when uh, around the time uh, people were asking for um, pre-sort. This might go away, and or uh, some of these options may be added to the single beam editor. Um, but uh, it was being updated. Uh, the programmer was uh, doing some modifications uh, and uh, decided to um, uh, replace some of the components that were in there, outdated components, and while in there, change some of the icons and the forms, give it a little bit more of a cleaner appearance. There and then also did it with the uh, ENC editor. Also um, uh, changed some of the forms. You know, some of the out forms were outdated and components were outdated. That was changed, and while in there, changed some of the icons, clean it up. Also, the display, uh, uh, all the points in here is the uh, geometry uh, of the um, uh, ENC uh, uh, chart, and uh, that's on by default. I think uh, somebody uh, called up and says, "How do I?" Uh, access the points. It's like, well, you just click on the button. Well, why don't you show the points to begin with? It's like, oh, great idea. It is an editor, right? So that's what we did. MB Max, the multi-editor. We had this uh, overlay uh, checkbox um, 
for the uh, uh, profile window. Uh, you can go into the matrix settings here, load up a um, high pack uh, matrix, and it's going to display that um, uh, overlay um, in the profile over here. So, another request. Um, Another option here, um, auto save and exit. Uh, this was done by request too. This, you know, if you're going out and you've got a really large survey end of the day, um, you know, um, you, you might want to uh, just run run the data through, run some of the basic filters, maybe throw in your uh, whatever pause pack settings or um, uh, uh, delayed heave. Uh, run, like I said, run some of the basic filters and just let it run through its its course. Uh, go home for the day, come back uh, the next day. What's nice about uh, it, it'll, what this does, it saves out to the HS2X format. And um, HS2X files actually draw a lot faster than the HSX files. The HS2X are the edited files, they're binary. The HSX files are, are ASCII files, as they take a lot longer to load. Um, they could, it could be minutes versus like seconds of the HS2X files. So the intention was here in here was to be able to, you know, end of the day, Run it; it'll shut down. MB Max, you know, save your HS2X files, so, uh, so you come back in the morning, reload those, and do and finish up your editing. So that's kind of a nice feature. Auto save. This is my favorite set setting here. Now we actually have an auto save in MB Max. So, uh, you know, I've seen that before, where uh, uh, you know people have done you know run it all day or something, and Windows decide to update their computer. Re restart, you know, you come back and all of a sudden your data was not saved. So uh, if you go to the um, uh, save survey settings, hit the save reminder um, button over here, it comes up with a little dialogue. So you have the option for auto save HS2X. Uh, uh, it'll prompt you to if you want to see the override or, or not, you know, so uh, um, kind of a nice little, uh, little tool there. Uh, Multi-editor, we can load the, the Kongsberg KML files directly into, uh, into the editor also. Um, so uh, it parses all the Kongsberg installation parameters, saves the uh, parameters, installation and operation parameters to a text file within the project folder. Uh, go to position is a little um, tool that was added. Um, basically, the idea is uh, they, somebody wanted a, a tool to go to, uh, you know, a, a target they might have somewhere um, or, or reported, and uh, the idea is that it's going to um, you could you could click on go to position, type in an X and Y, and it's going to look for that position within that um, uh, matrix file that's displayed in the uh, the main uh, MB Max screen. Okay, and it creates basically just creates a list of uh, sounding locations and sheet. And so if you have multiple go-to positions here, you could click on each one. It'll show the position accordingly on the uh, the MB Max Max map screen. Multi-beam editor minimum soundings filter. Another filter that was added. Um, under the search and filter options, under the matrix tab, it'll filter based on the minimum number of soundings per cell. So uh, in this example, uh, the, the value is three. So um, any cell that has less, um, less than three soundings, it won't save a, uh, a you know, one sounding uh, w within that cell. Um, kind of a, a good Q QC tool, a lot of time, depending on, on jobs, sometimes it's required to have a minimum number of soundings uh, uh, per cell uh, for, a, for a job. So uh, again, you know, if you have a few blank spots there, you know enough to go back and, and resurvey that area if you're, you're short a few, uh, uh, a few soundings in those cells. Uh, we did some more work to the uh, feature detect uh, um, tool that's uh, mostly intended for the e-hydro stuff or a lot of the Army Corps folks. Um, uh, we, we've added the uh, 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 options to export the metadata to e-hydro and one of the requirements also of, uh, per NOAA's request was to um, add some sort of feature detection. Uh, one thing is that um, we originally initially had um, the word uh, obstruction being saved in the uh, uh, feature detect file. Uh, we changed that to feature because uh, obstruction is a little bit scary when you're, uh, especially if, if you have a, um, you know, 40 foot channel or something, and you have something about 60 feet down. It's not really an obstruction. So, um, a few other things. Um, export to targets now shows how many uh, saved, how many skipped. A couple bug fixes too. Uh, raw depth added to sounding info window. Uh, it's basically the corrected depth without the tide correction. Um, 
additional uh, sonar settings uh, for the, the resound systems um, and also uh, the LAS export uh, and import features have been updated to the latest libraries. Uh, that's the, a lot of the, uh, the third party uh, routines get changed uh, according we don't find out till uh, somebody um, has a, a newer version of an LAS file so we try to update those libraries as, as much as we can. And then uh, new side scan targeting and mosaicing. Uh, Daniel's been working on this up to uh, Friday, I think, and uh, he's going to demonstrate the, all the changes here. It's a brand new interface. Nice. It's got dockable windows like we have in our um, uh, mag editor and a few other tools. Uh, display and speed improvements. Uh, it can load the SDF and uh, HSX files from the uh, MaxView 600 data. Um, a frequency selector in stage three mosaicing. So there's a lot of features that are going on. I strongly encourage going, uh, sitting in on that presentation too, because there's been a lot of changes, especially uh, people that are uh, interested in using our stuff for the side scan mosaicing. Um, cloud profile display. This is a nice tool. It's got a little um, icon up here that you click on, drag a, a line across your data, and it's going to display the profile on a, on a screen here. So, uh, and you can also edit and filter uh, directly from that profile display. And then cloud also has uh, the bucket display. I've showed the uh, tetrapods being drawn um, in survey using a boat shape. You can load our uh, um, 3D. Um, for our 3D shape editor, you can load up uh, any shape that you have in there. If you're, you're dropping any type of uh, uh, items like blocks or something, you can create a block type 3D shape or bring in a 3DS or um, OBJ file of, of that object. And it's going to um, uh, use the actual scale of that, uh, that object and draw it on the screen. Uh, more cloud stuff. New target view it displays targets in cloud. Uh, you can change the color, size, display of targets on the screen here. So uh, you have your kind of standard look, uh, uh, target um, circles over here. Uh, you can draw as points, the MB Max style targets. Uh, you have like 3D cylinders or flags, all kinds of different things. And then the save dialog had been modified to uh, just to uh, simplify the saving. Um, of the, uh, of, of the different format files out of cloud. And uh, ADCP Profile has a, a new interface. There's a, also going to be a presentation on that over the next couple days, too. Um, so if, any, if you're interested in the ADCP stuff, check out the new uh, updates to the profile program, new interface, the dockable windows, like we're seeing in the side scan, uh, generate color filled contours of the profile data. Uh, option to set blanking percentage at the bottom of the uh, profile, too, if you want to eliminate that from any of the uh, uh, calculations and stuff. So that's pretty much what's new. Ooh, 10 o'clock. Got done here a little bit early. Um, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, you, you'll see a lot of this stuff appear in the, the various um, uh, breakout room sessions and everything today. So uh, any questions on it, come on up and visit. And... Um, you know, hopefully we'll have HiPAC uh, 2023 available for you guys in a, a couple weeks. Okay. Thanks, and John. Think, thank you.